In this video, we will discuss an overview of assemblies and subassemblies. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0901 assembly and subassembly overview.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. So what is an assembly? An assembly is simply a placeholder for your subassemblies. If I select it right here, you'll notice that that is the assembly. To create an assembly, you simply go to the Home tab, Create Design Panel, and then the Assembly drop-down right here. So what are subassemblies? Well, subassemblies are the building blocks of your corridor. Think of them as like Lego pieces that you put together to design your corridor model. This is a subassembly, as well as the rest of these are also subassemblies. As far as where the assemblies and subassemblies exist in the Prospector tab, if you navigate to the drawing that you're in, Assemblies category, you will see that you have all the assemblies listed here that are in your drawing. Again, if you want to right click on these, you can actually zoom to them to put them in your view, especially useful if you have a large amount of data in this drawing. You can right click on the individual sides of the subassembly as well if you need to. One of the other really cool aspects of Civil 3D 2013 is that you can actually remove the assembly from your model space and it will still be available in the drawing to use for modeling. We'll keep ours open for now. As with everything in Civil 3D, there are going to be styles and settings you need to be concerned with. If I go to the Settings tab, I have the Assembly and Subassembly categories. The Assembly style is how this actual line should display. Nothing spectacular there. The Subassembly, however, does not contain any styles and you would only set Feature and Command settings for the Subassembly. The reason this is, is that there are some additional categories in different locations that control how a subassembly will display. Before we talk about those styles and settings, let's talk about what makes up a subassembly. So, what does make up a subassembly? A subassembly is comprised of link, points, and shapes. A link is basically the segment from here to there for each of the different parts of this subassembly. A point is the actual point that you see here represented by the circular graphic. And a shape is the shape that you see here that is shaded. So what controls the display of all those different parts is something called the code set style. And every assembly is applied with a code set style. The code set style is in the general multipurpose styles code styles category. And if I go ahead and edit one of these, you'll simply notice that it just maps the codes that are called in the subassemblies to the codes and styles that you want to define here. Again, the different categories are defined in the code set style, so shape, point, and link categories. And as you can see here, it's mapping based on this code, and just so you know, the codes are case sensitive, all right? So you have to actually map the correct code within here to make it apply the correct style, render material, material, area fill, and pay item. So how do you know what codes are being used in your assembly? With each object type, whether it's assemblies or subassemblies, you can go to the properties. Simply select it, and in the properties palette, you can change a few things here for the assembly. However, the assembly properties is where you're going to want to go to define the majority of all the settings. For instance, for super elevation, you can actually define the assembly type. If I look at the individual parts here, you'll see these are the subassemblies that are in this assembly, and here are all the settings. If you want to know the codes that are being used in this assembly, simply click on the Codes tab, and you'll see what actual codes are being used. If you want to map a code and have it display a certain way, you would simply look at the code name, whether it's a point, link, or shape code, depending on what you want to do, and then you would make sure that this code exists in the code set style and then apply the correct link style to the object. Subassemblies also have properties. However, the properties palette will actually be pretty much all the settings you ever need to go in and change. If I select any of the settings here, you'll notice that obviously, as you would expect, it updates automatically in the drawing as most Civil 3D objects are dynamic in nature. So any of the settings you change here will update the adjacent components or subassemblies within your assembly. You can also go to the subassembly properties and you can actually change the parameters here. And in fact, some of the settings, just be aware of this, some of them may be in the subassembly properties dialog box and not in the properties palette. 
If you want to see the actual codes being used by this subassembly, simply click the Codes tab and you'll see just this subassembly, unlike the assembly which showed you all the codes being used in all of these subassemblies. This concludes this video discussing an overview of assemblies and subassemblies.